witness consciousness what it gifts us with is this incredible ability to disidentify from mind to disidentify from thoughts we may have spent our entire life identifying with that voice in our mind that sounds like us being lost in it submerged in relentless thought patterns that give birth to uh, so-called negative emotions you know we get lost in thought but this practice enables us to disidentify from thought and in doing so obviously we become more aware of our thoughts we can't become more aware of what thoughts are arising when they are arising because we possess this space and this opening and this awareness within us that allows us to actually recognize these thoughts and see them for what they really are which is just little vibrational frequencies within us and at that point we we really have this power to choose whether to follow that thought or whether to simply drop it eastern mystics they often talk about the monkey mind and it's true our mind is like a monkey we just swing from thought to thought to thought to thought from tree to tree to tree to tree the almost the the momentum of the last thought kind of just gives birth to the next one and the next one and the next one and what this practice does is it brings awareness to the monkey mind enabling us to just sit on the tree <laughs> as this little monkey in stillness if we so choose and you know when when we cultivate the witness and when we become aware of our thoughts we also become aware of the fact that our thoughts give birth to emotion we have the thought that then manifests into an emotion and then we have another thought emotion thought emotion and we're caught in a cycle but this practice enables us to stop that cycle and break it so i was recently in a dark room retreat if you want to check out um, my review and little vlog of that then just check out um one of my recent videos so um, I was in complete darkness in this retreat and I actually had a really quite intense, vivid um, nightmare. And um, obviously I woke up and straight away I was still feeling the energy of the dream. Um, and this obviously, you know, I was, I was propelled into like a few <laughs> negative uh, fear-based thoughts that were, that just came up. And each time I was aware enough, I possessed the space within me to notice this thought and drop it. There's no point following a thought based on an imaginary dream <laughs> and creating fear within myself, fear of the dark, fear of what, what was involved in the dream. Almost like a child, <laughs> I guess. I could just drop that there and then. Same with, um, you know, I'm going to get laser eye surgery in the next couple of weeks. And I was in the dark. And that sparked this little thought just popping into my mind out of nowhere. That this, this little voice that said, oh, what about if something goes wrong and you have to stay like this forever with no sight? Now, I'm not even sure if that's possible, <laughs> but I noticed straight away when that thought came in and I realized that it's just catastrophizing and I realized that worry and these kind of thoughts are completely useless. So I do not entertain this thought. I can't control it coming into my mind, but I definitely don't entertain it. I notice it and I drop it, I just let it go. How, how do I do this? 
Well, what I do is I, I just draw on my innate power to choose my birthright, <laughs> especially as, you know, the, the witness through cultivating this witness, then I do possess the power to actually choose in that moment, am I going to follow this thought? Am I going to let that monkey swing to another tree? Nah, there's no point. <laughs> it's really not. I'm just going to give rise to these horrible emotions that I don't really want to feel personally. <laughs> so yeah, I draw on my innate power uh, to choose and I come back to the present moment. I come back to spaciousness. And through that light of awareness, that power, it really cancels out the thought. And, you know, I could even counteract this thought with a positive thought if I wanted. Replace that negative thought with a higher vibrational thought, cancelling it out. Sometimes these thoughts that come in, they are almost humorous. So I actually laugh. <laughs> I think that the ego really exists in seriousness. So if, if I am able to actually see the humour in these crazy thoughts that pop into my head, then I can just use laughter to, to distract myself really from the thought. <laughs> Much like you would with a baby giving it a new toy. <laughs> the mind is like a child sometimes. <laughs> oh. But yeah, spaciousness is, it's very powerful as well. Just returning to that present moment. Simply just coming back. I also like to use this uh, visualization that I call um, putting thoughts in cabinets. So sometimes uh, I could just sit there and see this thought come up and see this cabinet like a filing cabinet and see the thought as this kind of solid object that I'm just taking and putting in the cabinet do, 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 do. and then back to the present moment now yeah of course some thoughts are much easier to drop than others for example, you know, the, the examples that I use, these were just random, random thoughts. They did they weren't deeply ingrained belief systems, they weren't deeply ingrained traumas, they weren't like, you know, rooted in years and years of fear, really deeply um ingrained belief systems that are very like emotionally charged that already have so much momentum behind them that it's very difficult to stop and they just keep repeating, coming back in, back in, back in. Yeah, these, these thoughts were a lot easier to drop than, than thoughts like that, that have a history behind them, that have maybe kind of echoed throughout our entire lifetime, that are haunting us in a way. Now these, if these thoughts come up, especially, um, you know, more in one day than you're used to, like thoughts like I'm not good enough, these, these might always be background thoughts, but sometimes they appear more than other times, you know, if that's happening, then perhaps these thoughts are arising to give birth to emotions, to have an emotional release that we need, because we're on a journey of healing. If, you know, if we're cultivating the witness, we are creating space within us, and then that space, it really, <laughs> it really gives birth to emotional releases. It just happens. We're propelled on this healing journey. So yeah, you know, some of these thoughts, they will wreak havoc upon our emotional body and there's not much that we can do um, other than just accept that they are there. And of course, we can draw on our power to try to not 
believe them. Thoughts like I'm not good enough. Deep down we know that we are divine and perfect and we're existing within the mind of God essentially. So of course we're good enough. <laughs> it's just society that may have convinced us otherwise, that may have you know, given birth to this belief system within us. We know fundamentally that we are good enough, but then there's this also, there's this belief system, this thought that we've kept thinking for many years, that we are not good enough. So we could take the interest away from that thought. That may enable us to drop it more easily in the future. And it also takes the energy away from this belief system from this thought pattern, this reoccurring thought pattern, it takes the energy away from it. By choosing to, when these thoughts do arrive, like I'm not good enough, and your world starts crumbling around you, whatever project you're working on, or you know, what, whatever the person that you're seeing, you don't think you're good enough for them, or whatever it is that sparks this, this belief system within you, if anything. And you're able to really just not actually believe it, but watch yourself go through this thought pattern and this emotional uprise. You can watch yourself go through this thought cycle, thought cycle, thought cycle, from this neutral position, from this silent um, observer position, from the seat of the soul, just watching it and allowing it, but not letting it move you, not letting it really get to you. So some thoughts, they're almost seductive in a way. Well, all thoughts are seductive, they've all got a little bit of a magnetic pull to them, you know, no thought wants to die, it's an entity, it wants to live on, it wants to give birth to more entities. But some thoughts, they, they seem very seductive, almost as if we actually really want to keep thinking them. I mean, our pain, it's, it, it is addictive. There is maybe a part of us that is addicted to our pain. This pain body that Eckhart Tolle talks about, it wants to feed on more pain to survive. That wants to live as well. So we're almost possessed in a way. And then there's this other kind of seductive thinking maybe to do with infatuation about someone. Just constantly them just popping into your mind always and always, like constantly. And <laughs> yeah, it can be annoying especially if you're practicing this and you want to dwell in an empty mind. It can be annoying to be addicted <laughs> to thinking about someone. Uh, so, you know, it, if, you, if you want to sit there and you want to enjoy the sunset with an empty mind rather than thinking about someone, then the best thing to do in this case, I, what I would do, is take the interest away from it best you can. Because really, obviously, we're, we're giving birth to feelings um, in that case of infatuation with someone. We're giving birth to feelings that we kind of like. It's a little bit of excitement, maybe a bit of annoyance in there as well. As I say, if you want to stop thinking about them, but then this part of you also likes it. So really, in, in that respect, all, all we can do, I guess, is try to observe it as well without judgment, but also just take the interest away from it as best we can. Put the intention in to really take the interest away from this thought, if we so choose to, anyway, if we, you know, we might want to carry on with this thought pattern if we, if we want to. But by taking the interest away, we, you know, the, the energy of that thought, it will weaken eventually. So accepting whatever arises within the mind space, observing it peacefully, making that choice to drop it if we wish to, coming back to the present moment, counteracting it with a positive thought. But 
acceptance is really key whatever happens here I find you know if you are not able to drop a thought that's fine you are you're just doing the best you can and any judgment that you give yourself that's the ego coming in through the back door it's just something else to be observed so we want to be gentle with ourselves in this practice because it is a practice and some thoughts are vicious and they attack us and all we can do when that happens is just try our best to maintain this background sense of peace as the observer of it all. The one that is not of this world, the one that's not of the problems. The one that is infinite <laughs> and if you really really tune in to yourself in these times of turmoil emotional turmoil and your head's going crazy if you really really sit there and feel you you can really feel this background presence this silence and it's not really something that can be explained <laughs> Maybe I'll figure out a better way one day to explain that. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name is Jasmine. And if you enjoy this type of content, then please subscribe um, and like the video because it helps me out. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye-bye-bye.